Every time I make a video about preparing for interviews, there is always one common theme. Prepare early. Ideally, you're starting the preparation process months in advance, well before you even know you have an interview coming up. That is not what this video is about. What this video is about is your last minute interview checklist. These are the types of things that if you have like 24 hours before the interview, you should be doing to maximize your chances of doing well in the interview and getting the offer. Obviously at this point with only 24 hours left, there's only so much that you can do, but the hope is that this is just enough to give you a little bit of a boost in the interviewer's minds. So if you were going to be a maybe, this could get you across the line to being a yes and getting the offer. Let's get into it. This point should go without saying, but I'll say it anyway. You should know your resume inside and out without looking at it. If your interviewer is going to be asking you questions about your resume, which they almost definitely will be given that it is an interview, you should be ready to expand on anything that is on your resume. As a personal anecdote, when I was in college, I briefly had been in a club and I listed it at the very bottom of my resume in my little club section. And that was the one thing that the interviewer asked me about. Needless to say, I was not ready to talk about that because it was just this one random club that I happened to go to a few times. I did not get the offer. But when it comes to your resume, as you have probably heard, it makes a lot of sense to come up with stories for common questions related to challenges, strengths, weaknesses, working as a team, anything like that, you can look up lists online. You want to try to have stories ready for. Now, you won't be able to have stories ready for every question, but there's a good chance you can come up with a few really strong stories that kind of fall into a few different buckets. So any common question someone would ask you, you can kind of go down one of those storylines and you always have something useful to say instead of sitting there stuttering and not really knowing how to answer the question. Now, at this point, it's too late to remove something from your resume that shouldn't have been on there in the first place. But if it's just something that you're a little bit rusty at and it seems like it would be relevant to the interview, it probably makes sense to brush up on that. Now, if the entire interview is about that technology, you might be screwed, honestly, because it's gonna be really hard to cram all of that knowledge in in the next 24 hours. But if it's just something that you worked on at a previous job or internship and you just need to brush up on the basics, taking the 15 minutes to half an hour to maybe even an hour if you really need to drill into it is probably a good use of your time as opposed to having something on there that you used to know, but if they ask you about it, you can't really speak to anymore. Know all of the details about the role in the company, at the very least from the job description, and if you can, do a little bit of digging on your own. Simply put, interviewers want to know that you are interested and invested in the role. It makes you a more compelling candidate because it seems like if they were to extend you an offer, you're actually more likely to take it, as opposed to someone who just kind of sent out a lot of resumes randomly and doesn't really care about that job or is just trying to get that as leverage for something they actually do care about. In the same vein, you want to prepare questions for the interviewer that are specific to that role and company. Uh, one, it's a great way of showing interest and to demonstrate that you did do that research. And number two, it's actually helpful to you to figure out if that place is going to be a good fit. Admittedly, sometimes you might just be happy to get any offer regardless of the role or the company. But if you are fortunate enough to be in a position where you can have competing offers and you're trying to shop around, these are the things that you want to be asking related to the work you're going to be doing or what the culture is like or what the tech stack is. Basically, anything you might want to know before you make a major career decision about if you want to switch jobs and work at this company. From a technical perspective, if the role spends a lot of time talking about certain technologies and tools, it makes sense to refresh yourself on those. For example, if the company specifically mentions that they follow agile practices, it's probably worth taking the 15 minutes to read up on that and learn the basics if you've never worked with that. You don't need to be an expert, but just something to keep you from fumbling through the interview and having no clue what they're talking about when they start throwing around the term agile. A lot of people have their own opinions on this one, and I'm not here to argue. All I will say is look at the science. Memory recall and retention are much better when you get solid sleep, and if you have to make the decision between staying up all night cramming or going to bed at a reasonable time, I'm going to choose going to bed every single day of the week. And this aligns with my college experience as well. I didn't pull a single all-nighter cramming for a test when I was in college. There were definitely tests where I wish I was better prepared and I would have liked a little bit more time to study. But at a certain point, I realized that it was more important for me to get to bed and feel sharp when I was taking that test and to give my brain time to process all the stuff I had been studying than to keep staying up and trying to cram more and more information into my brain that I just wasn't going to be able to recall the next day when I was taking the test. If you feel fuzzy or slow, or you struggle to recall things when you're tired, 
all of which apply to me and I'm assuming apply to a lot of other people, especially if you're working in a timed environment as many interviews are, sleep is going to be your friend. That being said, if you're someone who frequently pulls all-nighters when you study for tests and that works really well for you, you do you, right? You've got 24 hours before your interview, don't do anything that's gonna throw you off or screw you up. Um, do what you're most comfortable with. If you're practicing leak code or doing system design prep in the 24 hours leading up to your interview, this is not the time for learning new things, and it's also not the time for trying to push yourself too hard. At the end of the day, it's all mind games, but personally I would much rather feel confident going into an interview than feeling in the dumps because I just tried a new leak code problem that I thought I would be able to solve, and apparently I couldn't solve it, and now my confidence is on the floor. If you happen to know that your company likes to ask certain types of interview questions, prioritize studying for those. There are some companies that are notorious for asking questions like dynamic programming. There are a lot of other companies that are never going to ask you a dynamic programming problem. Other companies might really like graphs or link lists or anything else. Now, in a lot of cases, you really won't know what types of questions to expect depending on the company or whatever team it is. But in some cases, they will actually give you a study guide and tell you what types of things to prepare for and what to expect on interview day. So especially if you're getting it straight from the source as opposed to rumors or speculation, definitely prepare specifically around those topics. If there's things that you want to brush up on or you just want to warm up your brain and get thinking in terms of code before the interview, I think both of those are a great use of time. Back when I was in college, I did a fly out for a company that was on the West Coast. And I remember I woke up at 5 a.m. Pacific time because my body was still on East Coast time. And I spent about an hour doing leak code, only easy problems that I had done before. And that meant by, by the time I had my actual interviews later in the day, I was feeling sharp, I was feeling awake, and I was feeling confident because I had been nailing all of the problems that morning. And that is exactly how you want to feel heading into an interview. Compared to the previous point, this one is a lot less about coding itself, although it is related, and much more so about preparing for knowledge-based questions. This is going to be things like how well do you know your big O efficiency? How well do you know your data structures and algorithms? Now, some of these can turn into coding style questions, but at the most fundamental level, you need to have a good sense of conceptually how all of these things work. For example, how does a linked list work? What is the efficiency of adding to the front or the back or in the middle or removing something from it? Does it matter if it's a singly linked list or a doubly linked list? Does it matter which pointers you have a reference to? These are all things that if you have a good conceptual understanding of a linked list, you should be able to answer. Hopefully you're not trying to just memorize an entire table of different efficiencies. I remember in college, that was the approach that some people were taking um, in a pinch you know, you can do that, but it's much better if you can conceptually understand what all these things are doing, because then you don't have to memorize and you can just figure it out on the spot that this operation intuitively does this and thus the efficiency is X, Y, Z. Um, it's one thing to say something is O of N squared and you can answer the interviewer's question. It's a lot better if you can explain why it's O of N squared in simple terms. Um, it shows you actually get it instead of just that you spend a lot of time memorizing. Now, hopefully you shouldn't be learning anything new here and you're really just doing review at this point. If you only have 24 hours and you don't know any of this stuff, you can't learn it all in 24 hours. Uh, but if you just have things you're a little rusty with or you just know are kind of some of your weaker areas, this is a great time to start prioritizing those. And this is what I did back when I interviewed. I had studied all summer. I was really well prepped and all that stuff. And that was great because once the school year started, I was pretty busy and I didn't have a lot of time to do interview prep in the weeks leading up to my interview. I also didn't have that much notice. So that meant that when I was flying out to my interview on the West Coast, I took that five or six hours on the plane. I just studied up on all of that stuff, made sure I was sharp and could quiz myself. I wasn't learning anything new. I made sure I knew all that stuff really well in the summer. I was just jogging my memory and making sure I was good to go for my interview the next day. All right, if any of you have interviews coming up, I wish you the very best of luck. You got this. Hopefully, if you followed the tips in this video, it is helpful to you, especially if you're right on the edge, that it can get you across the line and help you to get that offer. Anyways, that's it. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one.